In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to play The Witcher Old World, the base game. Let's bring it to the table. A quick note I just want to talk about before we dive into the setup is I am using the deluxe version of the game that I backed through Kickstarter, which does come with some different changes than the standard edition, such as adding monster miniatures. So anytime in this video you see a monster miniature and you are using the standard edition, please replace it with one of the monster tokens instead. I will be using those tokens throughout the setup to help you guys get started, but throughout this game I might be using the miniatures instead when it comes to like fighting monsters and things like that. So keep that in mind, uh, cause there could be some components that you see throughout this video that don't come with the standard edition. But I'll do my best to only showcase components that only come with the standard edition. With that being said, let's dive right into the setup. To start things off, place your game board in the middle of your play area. Next, grab all the action cards to form the action deck. Give it a shuffle and place it here on the game board. Make sure not to mix up any of the Witcher starting cards that have their Witcher symbol in the top corner of the card in this deck. Next, reveal the top cards of the action deck until you have three zero cost cards. To see the cost of the card, check the bottom corner of the card. Once three cards that cost zero have been revealed, place them in the bottom three slots on the buying track on the game board. Combine any of the other revealed cards that don't cost zero and shuffle them back into the action deck. Next, reveal the top three cards of the action deck to fill in the remaining three slots of the buying track. Next, place all the gold tokens off to the side in reach of every player. And do the same for the dice. Next, shuffle all the potion cards to form the potion deck and place it here on the game board. Next, grab the attribute trophy cards that look like this. There is two of each, specialty, alchemy, defense, and combat. Depending on the number of players will determine how many you will be using. If you are playing a two to three player game, you're gonna only be using one of each attribute trophy card. If you're playing four to five players, you'll be using all the attribute trophy cards. Place the attribute trophy cards here. After this, grab the city exploration deck, give it a shuffle and place it in one of these two slots on the game board. After, grab the wild exploration deck, shuffle it and place it next to the city exploration deck. Next, grab the event deck and make sure it is in order, starting with number one on top, then two, then three, and so on and so forth. Do not shuffle this and place it on its corresponding spot on the game board. Next, grab all the location tiles that look like this, sort them based off the terrain type, mountain, forest, and water, shuffle them and keep them face down nearby on the game board in separate piles. Draw one token for each terrain type and flip it face up and place them in the corresponding slots on the game board that's located here below the action deck. These will be the starting locations for the monsters. Next, sort all the monster cards into three separate piles based off their level. Level one, two, and three. Place them nearby on the game board face up. Next, grab and sort all the monster tokens and separate them also based off the level. This is located on the back of the token. Shuffle each pile separately and place them nearby on the game board face down. Now draw three tokens from the level one stack of monsters and place them randomly face down onto the starting locations that you have chosen earlier. In this example, after all monsters have been placed face down, reveal them face up and grab the corresponding monster cards and place them under their matching location tokens on the game board, like so. If you are using miniatures, you can swap out the miniatures for these tokens, which I'll be doing throughout this video. Next, grab and shuffle the monster fight deck and place it near the game board. Now time to choose the starting player. This can either be done at random or simply the last player to read a witcher book can be the first player. Each player can randomly choose a witcher that they would like to play as and get their starting player board. Once players have chosen the witcher player board, they then take the matching witcher miniature with the color base, five of the matching colored wooden cubes, their scoring token and their wooden shield marker. Players then take their scoring token and place it in the bottom slot on the trophy tracker. After that, place cubes on your player board on the level one slot on each one of your attributes and your Witcher level. Place your shield marker on the level one slot on the shield tracker on your player board. Then each player will take 10 of their starting action cards 
This is determined based on what Witcher school they are going to. It will have the same symbol as the Witcher school in the top corner of the card. This should be a total of 10. Shuffle them and place them face down next to their player board. Then each player will take the corresponding Witcher trophies that match their school and color. Based off the number of players will determine how many Witcher trophies they will have. In this three player setup, each player would only receive two of the four Witcher trophies chosen at random. Now each player will receive gold and draw cards from their starting action deck based off of turn order. This is determined by this chart here in the rule book. Finally, each player will take their Witcher miniature and place it in their Witcher school that corresponds with their symbol. We are now ready to begin the game. The goal of the game is to prove that you are the best Witcher and in order to do that, you must be the first player to reach four trophies on the trophy tracker. There are three different ways to earn trophies, by defeating monsters, by defeating other witchers, and by meditating once an attribute has reached level 5 on your player board. Now, there are three phases a player does on their turn before moving on to the next player. There's phase 1, which is the movement and action phase, where a player is going to be moving around the board taking different location actions, and they can move and take as much location actions as they want, as long as they have the resources to do so. I'll talk about that in just a second. And phase two is the explore, fight, or meditate phase where players can explore either the cities or the wilds from the exploration decks, fight a monster if they wish to do so and they are on the same location as the monster, and if one of the attributes is at level five, they can choose to meditate to gain that matching attribute trophy from the attribute trophy cards that are available on the board. The last phase is the buying phase where players can purchase cards from the buying track over here on the game board. They can only buy one card during that phase, but I'll talk more about that when we get to phase three. Starting off, let's just talk about phase one. Now, in order for players to move during phase one, they must discard cards from the hand to move to a connected location. All locations are connected through these different roadways. So in order for my Witcher to move, I must discard a card from my hand and the location that I wish to go to must match the train type of the card that I discard. So I want to go here to draw a potion and that train type is mountain. So I must discard a mountain card from my hand like so, place it next to my player board into my discard pile and then I can move my Witcher there and take that location action, which happens to be draw a potion. Now potion cards do not count towards your hand limit. You can either keep it in your hand or off to the side. But on that note, at any point in the game, your hand limit can only reach up to seven cards. This can happen during combat because there's a lot of draw effects that can help you draw more cards during combat. But if your hand limit were to reach seven, you would then not take any more draw card abilities and keep your hand limit at seven cards. Now I can move to this location because this is a wild location and you don't need a specific train type to move here. You can just discard any train type that you want and move to this location. So for this location, it is a witcher school and I would like to train up a certain attribute. So I am going to discard my mountain card that I have in my hand again and move to this location. And at which locations you can choose to train up your different attributes. However, keep in mind you can only change your special attribute at your witcher school. Because this is not my witcher school, I cannot train my special there. But I can train combat, defense, or alchemy. In order to train an attribute, you must pay gold. The amount of gold that it requires to train that attribute is always one more than the level that it's currently at. So in this example, I'm going to train probably my defense up. So it's going to cost me two gold. So I take two gold off my player board, put it back in the supply, and then I can raise my defense up one level. Now that I raised my defense, I can now raise my shield level up by one because my shield level will always be at my maximum defense level. Now it's also important to note that you can level up your Witcher as soon as all your attributes have passed your current Witcher level. So as you can tell in this example, let's say all my attributes reach level two, I, I can then level up my Witcher to level two. In this case, I would get to draw a card because that's the bonus I get when you level up your Witcher. Also on that note, some effects make you lower a certain attributes like the fence. If that happens, you do not need to lower your level. You can keep your level at its current level, like in this example, let's say my defense was at level three and I'm at level three and then an effect caused me to lose my defense level by one. I do not lose my Witcher level. 
Since we are at a Witcher School, let me kind of explain what each one of these different attributes means. Starting off with combat. Combat means that's how many cards you can draw during your fight turn when you are fighting a monster or another Witcher. This doesn't happen for your first fight turn though, because when you initiate combat, you can only keep the cards that are in your hand and then you make your life pool. You do not get to draw any cards for your first fight turn. Next, we have defense, which I already kind of talked about. Defense helps you increase your shield level, which will help you prevent against damage in combat. When taking damage, you always lower your shield level first, then start discarding cards from the top of your deck, then from your hand. Once you have no more cards left in your deck or your hand, you are considered to be knocked out. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about fighting. Next is your alchemy. Now this determines how many potions you can use during an entire fight. And anytime you increase your alchemy, you get to draw a potion from the potion deck. Now your special is different with each witcher because they have their very own unique different ability. The higher that that attribute is means the better that that ability is going to be. Now I only have one more card left in my hand which happens to be forest and I currently do not like this forest location action so I don't actually want to move there. So if there's a location that I want to go to and I don't have the terrain type card to discard to go there, I can either discard two cards from my hand to move to that location, which I don't have currently, but I can also discard one gold and a card to go to that location. So in this example, I would want to go here. So I'm going to discard this card and a gold so I can move up here and raise my alchemy level. Like so, and then I would draw a potion card as well. Just to explain these types of locations a little bit more whenever it calls for you to train a certain attribute besides your Witcher school, I can only train that attribute if it is either at the same level as my Witcher level or if it is less. So in this example, my alchemy has already been trained, so I cannot train it to level three because my Witcher level is still at number one. However, if my Witcher level happened to be at level two, for an example, and I moved to that location, I can then train my alchemy to level three. If I wanted to train this alchemy up to level three, I would have to go to a Witcher school and pay the appropriate amount of gold to train that to level three. Now I can no longer move because I have no more resources to do so. So then I am going to go to phase two. First, let's talk about some of these location actions that might seem a bit confusing. Starting off with this location. This location allows me to gain a gold and start a trail quest. Now in order to gain a trail quest, I must choose a monster that is on the board that I would wish to track. In this example, I'm going to track the Harpy. As you can see here, it is at a forest location. So I'm going to grab the forest location token and reveal it face up. Whatever this location is, I must reach that location in order to turn this token into a trail token. But because this is a quest, I get to place one gold from it uh, from the supply. Now when I reach this location, I will also gain that gold. This simply gets placed on my player board, making sure I don't mix it up with my gold like so. So this location happens to be at number eight, which is this location over here. So let's say my Witcher then moves to that location next. I would then gain this gold from the location token, flip it over to its blank side. Now I have that trail token. Now when I go to fight the Harpy, I would get to go first when I fight that monster. I'll explain that more when I talk about fighting monsters. You can still move into locations with monsters. The monsters do not block that location action. No effect triggers when you move into a location with a monster. Another quick location that I would like to discuss is Dice Poker, which are these locations that have the dice symbols. If I enter a location, again, this is for an example, uh, put my Witcher there, I can then play Dice Poker with the locals. If that is the case, I would choose another player to represent the locals. I would put up one gold, and then the locals, the bank, however you want to look at it, would put up two gold, and whoever wins dice poker would win that amount of gold. So I would get a set of five dice from the supply here. I'll choose white dice. And then another player would get the other five dice. Now we both roll those dice simultaneously. We both have a pair. The locals have a pair of sixes and I have a pair of ones. 
Now the locals, the player that is representing them, can decide if they want to re-roll these dice again. They're going to see if they can get three of a kind or something better by taking the rest of their three dice and rolling them. They do not get better than a pair of sixes, but they can only roll twice, so that is the end of their roll. Now, the active player, which is me in this example, can choose to re-roll my dice. And I also want to get three of a kind because my pair of ones does not beat their pair of sixes. So I'm going to take these three dice and give them a roll. And I did. I did get three ones. So I got three of a kind to their one pair. So I would actually win that exchange and I would gain all three gold. Now, if I would have lost that exchange, I would simply just take the gold and place it back into the supply. Now, these are not just the only locations that you can play dice poker. If you go to a location with the Witcher, you can choose to play dice poker with that Witcher. That player cannot refuse to play dice poker with you. They can only refuse if they don't have any gold to ante up. So in this example, let's say I am playing against the yellow player. They got tons of gold but they can only put up one, I put up one, and then there is also one from the bank. Again, both players will roll simultaneously. Then you would compare the results like so. So me, the active player, has a pair of ones, and the second player almost has a straight. Now he can either try to re-roll these dice to get a better result, or, uh, or try to go for a straight by rolling one dice. He's going to decide to re-roll all the dice to try to get a better uh, dice poker hand. He re-rolls them, and he did get a better one. He got three sixes. That's going to be hard to beat. Now the active player will get to choose if they want to re-roll the dice. Now this is going to be pretty tough because I don't think I can beat three sixes, but we're going to roll them anyways. Oh, geez, I swear I'll keep this in camera. I actually got a full house, three twos and two ones. Oh, they got a full house too, didn't they? Yes, they did. They actually got a full house, not three sixes. You can see there's two pairs there. So their th full house beats my full house because their sixes are higher than my twos. So they would gain the gold. I hope that makes sense. If not, please refer to the rule book to see what dice poker hand beats which one. But each player gets two rolls. The first roll is always rolled simultaneously. And then the non-active player gets to choose if they want to re-roll the dice first or not. And then it's the active player to re-roll their dice. Next comes phase two where a player can either choose to explore the wilds or the cities, fight a monster, or meditate if they have a level five attribute. But let's talk about explore first. If a player wishes to explore the cities or the wilds, another player will flip over the top corresponding card and Read out the card to that player. And once you resolve the effect of the card, remove that card from the game. If a result of an exploration card results in a keyword that says quest, keep that card either on or near your player board and do the following. If the quest has a specific location connected with it, then in order to resolve it, you must go to that location anytime during future turns. If a quest type has a terrain type connected with it, then you draw a random location token matching the terrain that it says, and then when you reach that location, you complete that quest. Now let's talk about the second option that you can do during phase two, and that is fight a monster. If you end your movement on a location with a monster and you are ready to move to phase two, you can now fight that monster instead of exploring or meditating. So let's say I ended my movement here with this Harpy. I leveled up my stats quite a bit. I got some few cards in my deck and I'm feeling confident I can defeat this monster. First things first is you would take the monster's card and read its effect. And in this example, the Harpy says, during the player's first fight turn only, their combat level is lowered to zero. They may still play other effects to draw cards this turn. So what that means pretty much here, I'll actually leave this over here. What that means is because my combat level is at three during this fight, I would draw three cards during my next fight turn. But because this is my first fight turn, it's actually supposed to be lowered to zero. So I'm just gonna do that right now, place that there. But first things first is I gotta create each other's health pools. So I'm gonna take my discard pile and shuffle it into my deck, like so, to create my life pool. Okay, I'm gonna place that off to the side. Now I'm gonna create the monster's life pool by taking the monster fight deck, shuffle it, and based off that monster's health, 
will determine how many cards is in its life pool. It says 12, so I'm going to give the monster 12 cards. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. I'm going to move him off to the side just for now. So first things first, uh, when it comes to fighting on your turn, you can activate any special effects such as potions, your special ability, possibly an attribute trophy card that allows you to do a special effect during your fight turn, if you have one, or even another Witcher trophy that has a special effect, or even sometimes there are certain cards in the quest deck that can give you special bonuses in combat. Those would all activate first before you start playing cards from your hand. So I only have one card in my hand, so that is what I'm going to play, and it does two damage to the monster. So I would take two cards off the monster's health by discarding the top two cards of the monster deck. Now, as you can tell, if I could play more than one card, I could possibly play them in a combo by matching these extensions that is listed on the card. I'll show you that during my next turn. Now that my turn is over, I would apply any other special card effects. Uh, I don't have any special card effects to raise my shield level or anything like that. So this simply just goes into my discard pile. I now can draw cards based off my combat level, but because of the Harpy special effect, I can only draw one card for my next turn. Then I can put my combat level back to number three. So now it is the Harpy's turn. And how this works is another player should be controlling the monster and they state if it's going to be a bite or a charge before revealing the card. In this case, let's say they pick charge. So I'm going to reveal the top card of the deck and pretty much read the effect of the chosen action. Because I picked charge, this is what would happen. So I read the charge effect and it pretty much says I would discard cards from my hand based off the monster's level. It's level one, so I must discard one card from my hand at random. I only have one card, so that card just simply gets discarded. Now, because I have no more cards in my hand, I can still play certain cards to help, and I don't have any potions that help me, so I must skip my turn. Uh, but because my combat level is at level three, I can now draw three cards. Unfortunately, though, it is the monster's turn again, so the monster would go again. Let's say this time it's going to be a bite. I would now take the bite action. And this one says, the player lowers the combat level by one and takes zero, one, or two damage based off the monster level. Because the monster level is one, I take no damage, but I must lower my combat level. Now that is permanently in play. I have to raise my combat level again after this fight. It does not grow back to its default. It stays in effect for the rest of the game, which kind of sucks. All right, so I actually drew three cards that allowed me to play a combo, so I can show you how comboing works in this game. So first things first, you play one card, see if it can extend to another card, which this means I have to play a yellow or a purple card next. I'm going to play a yellow card next to combo at that. And then I'm going to play a purple card. And that is my combo. Now this is the order that I had to play it. I could have went like this as well, but then I couldn't play my yellow card. I have to play it in the extensions of the card. So in this case, I will deal one two damage to the monster and what this symbol means is I can return this card to my hand because I comboed it with a yellow card. And this symbol means I can draw an extra card at the end of this fight turn. This means raise my shield level but I haven't took damage so I can't raise it yet either. So I get to draw three cards because my combat level got lowered. So I'll draw one, two, three and the monster will get to go again. Now fighting will continue like this until either the monster is knocked out or the player is knocked out. Now based off the result, certain different things will happen. If the monster is knocked out and the player is able to get rid of all the monster fight cards that that monster has, they win the fight and they gain two gold. They move up on the trophy tracker and suffer fatigue. When players suffer fatigue, they must discard the appropriate amount of cards from their deck, hand, or discard pile based off their level on the trophy tracker. When you trash a card, simply just place it aside and remove it from the game until the game is over. They also gain the monster card and with its special ability that is on the back, they tuck that underneath the player board. 
If the player took any damage during the fight, they would then raise their shield level back to its maximum level. Again, I lost my combat, but that does not restore it back. Only your shield level. Now, all players would also discard any train tokens that they have matching that monster and put it back in the matching location pile. The monster miniature or token is now removed from the game board and a new monster will spawn matching the same terrain type as that monster. But in this case, because I defeated a level one monster, a level two monster will spawn instead. When you defeat a level two monster, you will spawn a level three monster. And when you defeat a level three monster, you just spawn another level three monster. So if I reveal this, this reveals the Griffin and I would reveal the top card of the top forest location token and put that monster there. So I'm gonna remove that 17, put this here. Sure, and number 10, which would be there. And then the player would move into phase three. Now some other outcomes that could happen is if let's say the monster won the fight and the player got defeated. What would happen is they would gain a trail token matching that monster which in this case i already had one so i didn't need to gain one but if i didn't have one then i could gain one for free that way the player would also gain a free zero cost card from the buying area and add it to their discard pile and during phase three instead of drawing three cards the player would have to draw two cards instead now there is another outcome that could happen and that could be if the player ended up playing all the remaining cards in the hand and the monster life pool still had zero to one cards left that means the monster has been driven away if that is the case do not move up on the trophy tracker but the player still gains two gold remove that monster from the game board and spawn a new monster of the same level matching that terrain type of the monster that was driven away you will still need to flip over a new location tile to spawn that monster in a new location. Player would also gain a free zero cost card from the buying track. Before wrapping up fighting, I just wanna cover a few card symbols that you might come across during your gameplay. Such as this symbol here. This symbol means draw the top card of your discard pile. This symbol means you can raise your shield level up by one if it's not already at its max level. So in this example, my defense is that three, let's say I took one damage, I can then move it to the three slot on my shield tracker. And that is pretty much it for fighting a monster. Now let's move on to fighting witchers. Now another fight you can do during phase two is fight a witcher if you end your movement on the same location as a witcher and you do not play dice poker with that witcher during phase one. If that is the case, you can initiate combat with that witcher. How that works is pretty much the same as fighting a monster, but the active player that initiated combat will go first. Both players will keep any remaining cards in the hand and shuffle the discard pile into the deck to create their life pool. If there are more than two players playing in this game, they can also make wagers by placing a goal either if they think the active player is going to win or the defensive player is going to win. Whatever the result may be after the fight, if the player makes a wager and they win, they gain a gold from the supply. If they lose their wager, then they pay the gold back to the supply. Both witches would take turns back and forth trying to deal as much damage to one another. In this example, let's say that the red player wins the witcher fight and they are the active player. They would then gain gold based off where the green player is on the trophy tracker, which in this case, the green player is on level two, so they will gain two gold from the supply. After that, they would then gain one of the green player's Witcher trophies and reveal it face up. They read the effect of that trophy and tuck it underneath their player board. They now have that ability for the rest of the game. They would then also then move up on the trophy tracker and suffer fatigue. Now, because the red player won that Witcher fight, they can no longer fight the green player when it comes to combat. However, the green player can still initiate a fight with the red player if they think they can win. After a witcher fight is over, you take the closed tavern token and place it on the location where the two witchers fight. This means no other witcher fight can happen at this location. And remember, witcher fights can never happen at witcher schools. So if you end your location at a witcher school, you'll be safe from a witcher fight. 
Now, since the defending player lost, they also can get some special bonuses, such as a free zero cost card from the buying area, and that simply just goes back into the discard pile. Then the green player would shuffle their discard and draw a new hand of three cards. If the defending player won the fight, they would gain gold based off where the active player is on the trophy tracker. In this example, red player was at level three, so the green player would gain three gold if they defeated that player. They do not move up on the trophy tracker, but they discard any remaining cards that they have in their hand and shuffle it back into the deck and draw a new hand of four cards. In that case, the active player would have lost the fight, so they result in getting a free zero cost card from the buying track, and during phase three, they would draw one less card. At any point during the game, if an effect allows you to gain a certain cost card from the buying track, if that card is not available, you reveal the top cards of the action deck until that cost has been revealed. Keep in mind, you can ignore these buying modifiers. Now, the last thing to talk about when it comes to phase two is if you choose not to fight, explore, you can choose to meditate if one of your attributes is at level five. So in this example, let's say Red's player has raised the defense all the way to level five. They can choose now to meditate during phase two. If they choose to meditate, they search through the attribute trophy deck and find the corresponding attribute trophy. In this case, it is defense. So I would search through this and gain the defense card. Again, tuck this underneath your player board and move up on the trophy tracker and suffer fatigue. If that attribute trophy card is not available, you do not gain that trophy. Also keep in mind, if the fourth trophy that you are going to gain is through meditation, the game will not end. You can only end the game in either a monster fight or a witcher fight. With that being said, we are ready to move on to phase three. This is the buying phase for the game. Players now will draw up to three cards from their deck. If they only have one card in the hand, then they would draw two cards. In this case, I have no cards in my hand, so I drove three cards. Now, some card effects will let you draw an extra card during phase three. If that is the case, draw an extra card. Now, players can only buy one card from the available cards on the buying track. To buy cards from the buying track, you must discard cards from your hand according to that card's cost. Remember to apply any modifiers to the card, depending on where they are on the buying track, plus one or minus one. So in this case, I actually really want the card that costs zero. So I would not discard any cards from my hand and I would simply take the one card that costs zero and place it into my hand. It does not go into your discard. This means I have four cards going into my next phase when it comes back to my turn. Once a card is purchased, you simply slide all the cards down one slot and reveal the new top card from the action deck. When it comes to buying these cards, you also want to keep in mind what terrain type you are buying because this is going to determine where you're going to move during your next move phase. If you have all mountain cards in your hand, you might want to consider buying a forest or water card so you can move to some different locations. And that is how you play The Witcher Old World. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll also have links down below to Go On's board, the publisher of The Witcher Old World's Facebook group and Discord. They have an amazing community of people. I would love to answer your guys' questions as well. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, bye.